Welcome back now. A Pakistani military's captain and a soldier have been martyred in an ambush by terrorists in northwestern Khyber, Pakhtunkhwa province. Pakistan military's media wing says two other soldiers were injured in the attack. The army says one terrorist was also killed during the fighting after the patrolling party was attacked near North Waziristan district. The army says the name of martyred captain was Sabi and Sepoy's name was Naveed. Indian Army has martyred a 13-year-old girl in unprovoked firing in Bedouri sector along the line of control. Pakistan's military's media wing says the deceased girl's mother and a 12-year-old boy were also injured in the Indian firing. The ISPR says Pakistan Army responded effectively to Indian aggression against civilians in Hajipir and Bedouri sectors. India's increasing ceasefire violations across the LOC have heightened tensions between the two countries. Yesterday, Indian forces indiscriminate firing critically injured three Pakistani civilians. Islamabad has summoned Indian charged day affairs multiple times to warn India against flaring up tensions in the region. In occupied Kashmir, Indian troops have martyred another three youths, raising this month's toll to 32 so far. The occupation forces martyred civilians during a cordon and search operation in Zadibal area of the capital, Srinagar. Indian troops have sealed all the entry and exit points of the area and have suspended the internet service. They are searching all houses in the area and have stepped up frisking of vehicles. The occupied valley has been under New Delhi's crushing curfew and communications blackout for the past 322 days. Moving on now, the death toll from COVID-19 in Pakistan has stopped 3,500 after 119 more died overnight. The health ministry says nearly 5,000 tested positive in the last 24 hours, raising the tally to over 176,000. The ministry said nearly 68,000 patients have recovered so far, while there are still over 105,000 active cases. The southern province of Sindh leads in the number of infections with over 67,000 cases, while Punjab is second with nearly 66,000 cases. Meanwhile, international flight operations to and from all airports of Pakistan have resumed except Gwadar and Turbat airports. India has recorded its highest single-day surge in COVID-19 cases as 15,400 tested positive for the virus. New Delhi has now become the fourth worst hit country with over 400,000 infections. The health ministry said 306 people died overnight, taking the death toll to over 13,000. Officials said there are more than 169,000 active COVID-19 cases in the country. They said the number of recoveries stands at 2.2 million. The ministry said major cities like Delhi, Mumbai and Chennai are badly affected. In Brazil, the COVID-19 death toll nears 50,000 as more than 1,000 died overnight. In the U.S., the death count has surged to nearly 118,000 with over 2.2 million infections. Globally, the COVID-19 death count has crossed 464,000 with over 8.7 million infections. More in this report. As the world struggles to contain COVID-19 spreading, Latin America continues to remain the flashpoint of the virus. The region has passed 2 million cases, with Brazil becoming the second worst hit country by COVID-19. As cases pile up in Chile, the government has revised its death toll to over 7,000 from the previously known 4,295. In relation to those who died due to COVID-19 without laboratory confirmation, that is deaths in which COVID-19 is a possible or a probable cause, the number rises by 3,069. Many European countries are easing lockdown restrictions while Germany struggles to contain the recent outbreak at a slaughterhouse. Over in China, authorities reported 25 new domestically transmitted cases of the virus. But experts believe Beijing's effective response is a contribution to the global course of human rights. China, you had a huge mobilization of the whole of society to save people's lives. China paid a very severe economic price for this. So this is not happening in the United States. The, the American people have just been allowed to die. That's why you've had such enormous demonstrations and protests in the United States. 
20 million people in America have also lost their jobs. In the African continent, the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases has crossed 286,000 as death toll climbs to nearly 7,700. Moving on, Afghanistan's acting foreign minister, Mohammad Hanif Atmar, has met his Iranian counterpart, Javad Zarif, in Tehran. The Afghan Ministry of Foreign Affairs says the issues of migrants and other matters of bilateral importance were on the agenda. It says the Afghan delegation includes officials from the ministry's presidential palace and the National Security Council. The Afghan Ministry of Foreign Affairs says the reported mistreatment and drowning of Afghan migrants on the border were to be discussed. It said ways of strengthening and developing cooperation between the two countries is also on the agenda. Yemeni southern separators have taken control of military and police camps in Yemen's Socotra Archipelago, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Clashes erupted between the government and Southern Transition Council last week after both accused each other of violating the Riyadh Agreement. Fighting started in the strategic Socotra Archipelago yesterday as the two sides battled for control of the island's capital. Condemning the separatist attack, Socotra Governor Ramzi Mahrouz said his forces will fight back. The Southern Transitional Council has also claimed arresting several military personnel, including an Air Force commander. Egypt has threatened direct military intervention if Libya's government of national accord forces attack Libyan strategic city of Sayyid. In a televised address, President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi said Egypt can intervene in Libya to protect its western border. El-Sisi said Egyptian forces will act on the request of the only legitimate elected authority in Libya, which is the House of Representatives under LNA. Meanwhile, Saudi Arabia and the UAE have supported al-Sisi's statement saying Egypt has the right to protect its borders and people. Libya's GNA has rejected the warning, calling it interference in the country's affairs. The GNA has recently made major gains in the war against LNA after acquiring Turkey's support. Seven people have been killed in two separate bomb attacks in southern and central Somalia. Soldiers and civilians were among those dead. In the first incident, police say two bombs went off in front of the house of a military official in Vanlaya Vain town. In the second incident, three militants in a car carried out a suicide bomb attack at a military checkpoint in Bakad Wain town. A military spokesperson said the soldiers shot at the vehicle after the driver ignored orders to stop. Three soldiers died and two others were wounded. No group has claimed responsibility for the attack yet. Now over to the UK where three people have been killed and as many critically wounded after a stabbing's rampage at a park in the southern town of Reading. Police said a 25-year-old man has been arrested at the scene on suspicion of murder. They said the incident is currently not being treated as a terrorism. Police said there is no intelligence to suggest any further danger to public. However, people are urged to remain vigilant. The third incident was not connected to an earlier Black Lives Matter protest at the park. Lawmaker from Matt Harauda said the incident is deeply distressing to whole town, as it took place at a park often used by people for social gatherings. Quiet park just off the town centre, um, which has been um, used for many years for people to go and sit in at the weekend. It's peaceful. People were sitting. Um, observing social distancing, just chatting in groups when this incident happened. Uh, and it must have been absolutely shocking and it is deeply distressing to the whole town and our wider community. During the Black Lives Matter protests in the United States, one person has been killed and another wounded in a shooting incident in Seattle's Capitol Hill area. The police say they are investigating the incident.
Black Lives Matter protesters occupied the area after the custodial killing of George Floyd triggered a nationwide protest. The hospital said a 19-year-old male died shortly after arrival while the other was in critical condition. In Minnesota, too, the police said one person has been killed and 11 other injured in a shooting in Minneapolis. Meanwhile, North Carolina's governor has ordered the removal of a Confederate monument after demonstrators pulled down two statues. In Tulsa, Oklahoma, President Donald Trump criticized and anti-racism protest as he addressed a smaller than expected re-election rally. The unhinged left-wing mob is trying to vandalize our history, desecrate our monuments, our beautiful monuments, tear down our statues and punish, cancel and persecute anyone who does not conform to their demands for absolute and total control. We're not conforming. That's why we're here, actually. Meanwhile, investigators in Atlanta have issued an arrest warrant for a female suspect over the Wendy's restaurant arson last week. U.S. President Donald Trump says he will announce new restrictions on visas within a couple of days to block the entry of certain foreign workers. In an interview, Trump said the new restrictions will protect Americans struggling with the job market crushed by the pandemic. The U.S. president said there will be a very few exclusions from the new restrictions. Major American tech companies have urged Trump to refrain from blocking the flow of foreign workers into the country, saying it would hurt the economy. Earlier in April, the president ordered a temporary block on some foreigners from permanent residents in the United States. More news coming up after a short break. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Now in Mexico, 215 bodies have been found in nine mass graves in the state of Jalisco between the months of January and May. At a virtual press conference, Jalisco state prosecutor said the graves are located in the Guadalajara metropolitan area. The prosecutor said analyses of five graves is still pending due to the lack of staff unearthing which could increase the body toll. The official said a large number of bodies have already been identified and sent to their families. Violence crime has continued in one of the deadliest countries in the world despite confinement due to the coronavirus pandemic. Official data suggests there have been over 287,000 murders in the country since 2006's military crackdown on organized crime. Serbians are heading to the polls to elect a new parliament in Europe's first national elections since coronavirus lockdowns. Polling stations will be equipped with face masks and hand sanitizers for the use of the country's electorate of almost 6.6 million but many are expected to skip voting, partly due to fears of infecting the virus. Opinion polls show Alexander Vucic's conservative Serbian People's Party is set to get about 50% of the vote. His popularity is boosted by widespread public approval over the government's handling of the pandemic. The turnout could also be hit by boycott campaigns of opposition parties who say the vote will not be fair due to President Vucic's firm grip over the media. Chinese researchers have launched a second phase human trial of a possible coronavirus vaccine on Saturday. The second trial is among six possible vaccines being tested by the Chinese scientists on humans. Institute of Medical Biology at Chinese Academy of Medical Sciences says the phase two trial will determine the shots dose. It will continue to evaluate whether the potential vaccine can safely trigger immune responses in healthy people. The institute said it expects to use a plant dedicated to producing a coronavirus vaccine this year to prepare for China's future vaccine supplies. About a dozen vaccines are in different stages of human tests globally. Most parts of the world have witnessed the annual solar eclipse that created a ring of fire around the sun, which was seen in several countries. The event occurs when the moon covers the center of the sun, making the outer edge of the sun around the moon appear as a fire ring. Today's eclipse is rare as it concords with the annual summer solstice, the longest day when Earth's pole is tilted at its maximum towards the sun. 
Celestial experts had advised people not to view Eclipse Sun with the naked eye, even for a very short duration of time. They say direct exposure could have caused permanent damage to the eyes, leading to blindness, even when the moon covers most portions of the sun. Indonesia's Mount Merapi has spewed ash and hot gas in a six-kilometer high column in a fresh eruption. Massive ash clouds blanketed several villages on the main island of Java as rumbling noises heard kilometers away. Indonesia's Center for Volcanology and Geological Hazard Mitigation has not raised Merapi's alert status. Center says the status is already at the third highest level for the country's most volatile volcano since it began erupting last August. Authorities said an eruption in March forced the Solo Airport to close and people were asked to keep out of a three-kilometer exclusion zone around the mountain. Merapi is the most active of 500 Indonesian volcanoes as its last major eruption in 2010 killed 353 people. Now, the COVID-19 pandemic has not only upset humans but animals too. Life is harder than usual for the street dogs of La Paz amid COVID-19 quarantine. But a Bolivian man is making their days a little brighter and their bellies a little fuller. Details in this report. Fernando Kushner and his assistant roam on the city streets every day looking for stray dogs in need of some additional food and a little extra love. Kushner's mission of street dogs welfare began five years ago when he developed a program and campaign to promote feeding the dogs as well as adoption, sterilization and education. Three restaurants supported Kushner's efforts by giving him daily food scraps for the dogs, but these donations dried up during quarantine. Restaurants. I had food from three restaurants and gave them the dogs, croquettes, both meaning croquettes and scraps, not just restaurant scraps. And with the quarantine overnight, the volume of abandoned dogs increased by 10,000%. One bag of kibble wasn't enough. We had to carry three, four, five, six large bags a day to be able to feed the street dogs. Kushner and his team secured documentation to continue to work for the street dogs during the lockdowns. Although he has seen an increase in the number of abandoned animals since the pandemic began, Kushner says he has been heartened to see neighborhood residents leaving food and water for the dogs. More or less 2,000 dogs are helped daily in different neighborhoods and more than 1,800,000 rations have been given during the quarantine. For me, it is somewhat alarming. I never thought I was going to do it, but it can be done. It is to reach your hand out a little and ask for help and listen to the one above who sends you more energy, nothing more. According to government statistics, there are some 780,000 stray dogs in Bolivia today. Well, with that, we come to the end of this bulletin. For the latest updates, you can follow us on social media at Indus Talk News. Take care.